The best way I've found to describe machine learning is think like Tinder for bots. You feed them options and they swipe yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, yes, no, hot dog. Live text is just one of the absolute best new features coming to the iPhone, iPad, and Mac with Apple's big annual software updates this fall. And as of this week, it'll also be coming to Intel Macs as well as the M1. And I'll go over how Apple just clever girl that in a coffee lake hot minute. But first, let's dive into what exactly live text is and what it does. And I'll give you a personal example. I had a family member message me from the UPS store the other day and they needed an address to send a package to. I'd sent something to the exact same address a year ago but never bothered to save it. What I had saved was a photo I'd taken of the UPS label. So I searched for it, found it, tapped it, and it was just instantly selectable. So I swiped along, grabbed the text, copied it, pasted it into a reply, and sent it back, and they had the address. And in a way that required absolutely neither of us to have to manually write it down from the photo like an animal. I could just copy the text in and they could just copy the text out. And I've been doing that now with screenshots going on two months to the point where I can't tell if I'm in photos or in Safari anymore until I try to tap that address bar. What really blew my mind was at WWDC when developers were tweeting about grabbing code samples from the slides and pasting them into their Xcode projects while they were watching State of the Union or sessions live. And especially those PDFs, those PDFs where there's no text layer, just an image burned into it. You know, the ones that were previously totally inaccessible on their own. Yeah, just all of that text that's locked into all of the images on all of our Apple devices is now unlocked. And not just clear type, but handwriting, signs, billboards, whiteboards, all text always unlocked forever at the OS level. And because it's Apple and they have just more silicon power per square nanometer than anyone else on the planet, including up to 16 neural engine cores in the most recent devices, they're just like, let's do it live. Not process it on load, not batch it overnight, but do it all in real time, even straight from the camera. So you don't have to take a photo to grab all the text in a scene. You can just point, tap, and select, and then copy it and paste it and do whatever you want with it. And it's just transformative. And not only in a, yes, one day when we get the uh, VR headset or AR glasses transformative, but transformative right now, today. Now for anything that's clear text, it's not a huge challenge. OCR or optical character recognition has been a thing for ages. The less clear the text though, the huger the challenge. Start adding all the deformations that come from real life, real world photos, things like angles and perspectives and blur from depth of field, and that difficulty intensifies. Get into handwriting, including my handwriting, and it moves to another plane of existence entirely. But Apple had already been working on precisely that problem, starting with Scribble on the Apple Watch. The much bigger leap forward though was Scribble coming to the Apple Pencil and iPad last year. With that version, Apple was taking anything you wrote, anything we wrote, converting it internally to text, and then making it selectable and actionable within iPad OS. And that was all done by training the system through ML, through machine learning. If you're not familiar with that process, the best way I've found to describe machine learning is think like Tinder for bots. Stay with me. You feed them options and they swipe yes, no, no, yes, yes, no, yes, no, hot dog. It's not like programming in the traditional sense. It's more like training a pet which when I first heard the process described to me back with the introduction of Face ID was amazing and terrifying, amazingly terrifying, because you get into this whole thing of antagonistic neural networks where you have one like Batman type hero algorithm trying to get better and better at its task uh, at the yes, no swiping and another Joker type villain algorithm trying to fool it all the time. And they just battle away inside the machines with no human really knowing what they're doing anymore. Just that they're continuously evolving and getting better and better at those tasks. But I digress. For Scribble and now for live text specifically, Apple fed the machine learning models just a ton of handwriting samples, trained them as much as they computationally could then they took those samples and deformed them, angled them, curved them, skewed them, broke them up, 
and then they fed them again, and then deformed them again, and then fed them again, over and over again, until the neural network could I positively identify a wide enough variety of handwriting accurately enough for Apple to consider it baked enough to ship, at least for the beta. And no doubt it'll just continue to improve those models over time. And because Apple has these neural engines in so many devices now, they can run these models on those devices, which means not only is there very, very little impact on anything else the system may be doing at the time, because the CPU and GPU just aren't involved at all, but it can all be done on device. So none of the text is ever being sent to Apple servers or operated on in the cloud, which is exactly the kind of security first, privacy by design model Apple's been bludgeoning the industry with as a competitive advantage for these last few many years. And because the M1 basically brought Apple's iPhone and iPad silicon to the Mac, the M1 is like an A14 on Hulk serum, or the A14 is like a M1 Junior, however you want to think about it. The whole thing just works on M1 Max as well, which brings us all the way back to the Intel announcement this week. Because see, when Apple initially listed live text as M1 only, Intel owners got mad. Nobody likes to feel left out and Mac owners in particular, they will cut you. So Apple went back and prioritized spending some engineering time bringing this feature over to Intel as well, at least in a functional, if not exactly the same way. And what I mean by that is Apple is typically completely overzealous, like Moadib level overzealous about doing things in real time. Have silicon, will wicked flex. But unlike M1, Intel Macs just don't have neural engine cores. Even the ones with T2 chips, because those are basically A10 chips, from just before Apple Silicon went bionic. And that's especially true about almost anything that has to do with the camera. Apple wants it done in real time so it feels like a real camera, not like a filter being applied after the fact. But Macs don't have the same kind of camera systems as iPhones or iPads. So Apple's cutting this particular Gordian knot by relaxing their real time rule for Intel Macs and pushing live text off to the GPU. And because it's not doing the camera part and just operating on the text opportunistically, you'll probably never notice a delay or any overhead on any other process on an Intel Mac. You'll just get something almost functionally indistinguishable from the M1. And if you wanna learn more about how all of this stuff works, all the neural networks and machine learning and algorithms, a terrific place to start is this video's sponsor, Brilliant. It's this awesome website and app that'll teach you the fundamentals of everything from character recognition like live text and Scribble to search like Spotlight, but also math, science and computer science, logic and deduction, physics and quantum mechanics, game theory, even cryptocurrency, and more. Because it's built on learning while doing and solving real challenges in real time with no memorizing long messy formulas or fact sheets, no tests or grades, just instant feedback that coaches you bit by bit so you can rapidly improve and learn these foundational concepts, the ones behind all the most important new careers, literally before you even realize it. So if you wanna go from just using iOS, iPadOS, macOS, to maybe working on them one day, you can get your start today with Brilliant. Just go to brilliant.org slash Richie, click the link in the description, pick a course and get started now. Brilliant.org slash Renee Ritchie. And clicking on that link really helps out this channel.